Welcome to the Performing Arts Series brought to you by the Kennedy Center and Prince William Network. My name is Christine Dakin. Therese Kaposili and I are the artistic directors of the Martha Graham Dance Company, and I will be your moderator for today's program. This program is interactive, and if you'll have an opportunity later on to ask questions in the program by using the 800 number or the email address appearing on your screen, we hope to hear from you. Martha Graham was a revolutionary. She broke old ways of thinking and challenged established ideas. She was a pioneer and an explorer of dance. She created things and expressed things that most people were afraid of or hadn't thought about before. The dance she made was unique and looked very different from any other kind of dance that existed. Martha wanted dance to show the reality of life, its complexity, its harshness, and its passion. To do this, she had to discover movement that was not soft, easy, pointed, pleasing, but was angular, strong, hard, aggressive, blunt. The first audiences for her dance were not pleased by her work and didn't understand her. In 1926, when she began, there was no modern dance, only classical ballet which had come from countries like France, Italy, and Sweden. Her dancers were barefoot. At first, there were only women in her company. They danced in simple black wool dresses. They were fanatic and determined to create a new dance that was very much American and very individual. Then after the Second World War, for the first time, she had men in her company, men who had fought in the war, who saw life in a different way, and her dances began to develop in wonderful new directions. She took her inspiration from many things, from music, from books, paintings and sculpture she saw in museums, and other kinds of dance. She worked with other artists, composers, sculptors, actors, and writers to make her dances with wonderful sets, props, costumes, and music that was written especially for her. She took elements from the many cultures that she found in the United States and from all over the world. Dance is a language, like English, French, Spanish, or Japanese, but it is a language of movement, a body language. It is the perfect way to express what all human beings need to express, our passions, our curiosity, jealousy, hate, fear, frustration, joy, and many ideas. Dance is a body language we all recognize. Think of how you shake with laughter or cry until you gasp for breath or tense your shoulders and stomach when you are in pain or pull back from a fire. When our company performs all over the world, the audiences understand what our dancers are saying in dance without any translation, without any words. With the artists of the Martha Graham Dance Company, we will show you a little about the Martha Graham dances and the revolutionary dance technique she created to make these dances. A dance technique is the way the dancers learn by practicing dance movements over and over in many different ways. It is a kind of ritual which we do every day to concentrate, to get better at what we do, and to enjoy dancing together. The movements in the technique come together to make a dance, like words make a song. We're going to show you some of the most important movements that make up the Martha Graham dances, and see some of the ways the dancers translate movement into meaning. We begin with simple breathing exercises, sitting on the floor. On the ground, we feel the connection to the earth, feel the weight of our bodies. Breathing is the most basic and primal experience. We inhale and exhale to live. 
Martha developed inhalation and exhalation into her contraction and release. They come from inside, from the lungs and solar plexus, then into the muscles of the torso and into the legs and arms and feet. Sometimes this breathing is powerful, loud, percussive, like a shout. Sometimes soft, like a sigh or a whisper. <laughs> Martha discovered the spiral in our bodies and saw how it reflects many things that we see in nature, like a vine winding, wrapping around its center, twisting into itself and coming back to the beginning, like a tornado or a whirlpool. Martha pointed out, is never clumsy unless it is domesticated. Movement never lies. In dancing, we try to discover our animal nature and at the same time to be completely human. We find our balance first on two feet, how to center ourselves, to stretch and strengthen all the parts of our bodies from the neck to the back, to the arms and hands and feet. So we have the strength and flexibility to go as high, low, fast, and slow as we want.
Once we've found our balance, we challenge ourselves, seeing how far we can go off-center before we fall. Then we let the weight of our bodies shift and make us fall. Closer look. Take a clo closer look at why we call this dance a body language. See how Blakely will tell us a story by the way she moves, just by her gestures. You've done these movements, and you've seen other people move this way. You can get a pretty good idea what Blakely means, even though she's not speaking. Pretty clear, no? You can see how Blakely showed her anxiety, her fear. Martha Graham discovered how to take everyday gestures like you've seen and make them bigger and stronger. So we can see how our body expresses what is in our minds and hearts. Now look at the beginning of the dance called Errand into the Maze and see how the same movements that you saw Blakely do become expanded, larger and more complicated, transformed by Martha to tell a story. See how the man has to use his arms and back in a very different way and how that affects his movement and shows us his character. In this dance, Martha used a Greek myth many centuries old for her story about a woman lost and hunted in a maze. But the idea behind the story is very modern. How to face the things that frighten us haunt us and how we can conquer those fears.
watching a dance is like a conversation between you and the dancers. The dancers tell us a story through their movements in a way that makes us think about and feel our own experiences. Here's a completely different kind of story. The way the dancers move is completely different. It's part of a dance that tells us about joy and love. It's from the dance, Appalachian Spring, at the moment right after a wedding, when the man and woman dance together and celebrate the start of their new life together. It even has a little bit of American traditional square dancing in it that you might recognize. Now let's take a look as the dancers do some more of the movement from the technique that Martha used to create her dances. The ones we will focus on today are simply walking and falling, beginning with very simple walks, then becoming more complicated with balances and turns on the ground and then in the air, and with jumps, then becoming runs and leaps.
<laughs> Martha created many extraordinary different ways to rise and fall that you see in all her dances. She felt the center of her body in the hips, in the pelvis, and the solar plexus. All her movement came from this powerful center. This gives us a special way to use our own weight to begin any movement, shifting constantly off-center to the farthest limits of balance and beyond, to fall or to travel. Letting the weight of our body initiate movement connects us with the ground, gives us a sense of gravity and effort. We don't try to hide the effort in our movement, but show it. In a way, it becomes a reflection of the struggle we all have in living, the constant pull and push we feel in ourselves, the opposition we have in our lives. Martha said, falls are a means of affirmation. In no fall does the body remain on the floor. My dancers fall so they may rise. In the dance called El Penitente, the simple walk and fall are transformed into a story about bearing trouble and difficulties, facing the everyday weight of a sadness, or your faith, or even a love. Martha also used some wonderfully simple costumes and props that make her ideas in this dance beautiful, clear, and larger than life. In this section of the dance, you might also recognize images from the Bible. The inspiration for the dance came from Indians in the American Southwest, part of the United States where they have a tradition of making a street theater, acting and dancing out their ideas about stories from the Bible.
Dance in almost every culture has the power to bring people together, to celebrate, to grieve, to share a story, a ritual, or just for the pleasure of moving. Dance is communication on a very deep level because watching it, we feel in our own bones, muscles and hearts, what we see the dancers experiencing. Dance is a language everyone speaks. In our company, we have dancers from Taiwan, Norway, France, Italy, Mexico, Japan, Canada, Slovenia, and when they speak in the language of Martha Graham's dance, we all understand them. Martha's dance speaks to us directly through our senses, as well as our brains and our hearts. She said, my dancing is not an attempt to interpret life. It is the affirmation of life through movement. Her dance expresses abstract ideas, emotions, or can tell a story. She makes a complete theater of dance with her music, light, props, costumes, and sets. And sometimes it is just pure dancing. Like the last dance you'll see, the version of Angels, which shows us three different aspects of love. Like athletes, the dancers practice and become more than human. Martha called it divine normal. Like athletes of God, as Martha called them, Dancers show us the limitless and marvelous things we are all capable of. As the dancers get ready to perform Diversion of Angels, I'd like to invite our viewers to start calling in with questions. The phone number is 1-800-672-0067, or you can email your questions to the address on the screen. Let us hear from you.
We'd like to answer some of your questions now. Somebody from the audience? How are the dancers chosen to be in the company? How are the dancers chosen to be in the company? Because they're the most beautiful, most talented, most dedicated, most passionate dancers that we could find in all of the world. They come to our auditions, and each year we try and pick one or two of the dancers to join the company. Do modern dancers also study ballet? Do, do modern dancers also study ballet? Let me have <laughs> Let me have Heidi answer that question for you. Yes, we do. Actually, all of us have several various techniques that we study to keep our bodies conditioned properly. I think that most of us would agree that if you do one technique, you can tend to get overwork some muscles and underwork others. So we try to find a balance. But we also take um, modern dance classes, technique classes, and Martha Graham technique daily so to keep ourselves in this technique particularly. And? Another question from the audience? Where will the company be performing? Where will the company, oh, what a good question. Who has the microphone? Jennifer. Well, we're gonna be at the Kennedy Center this weekend, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night. And then we're going on a tour to Texas in a week, to Austin and Houston. And then uh, Southern California, San Diego, Palm Desert. And many things in the future yet. Yeah. And, then, and then into Europe in the summertime, Italy and Spain. How long does it learn to, how long does it take to learn a piece? Whitney. Well, um, so the excerpt that you saw me and Elizabeth do, I've been uh, learning since uh, last year. So it takes, takes me personally about, um, maybe three weeks to learn the steps, but then you go more in depth and learn the character of the piece and get more uh, deep into the piece. And so that could take, you know, a long time, years. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mar Martha Graham actually said it takes 10 years to make a dancer. And that's, that's about how long it takes. After you've done the dance for four or five years, maybe, three or four or five years, then you begin to feel like you actually know what you're doing. What kind of preparation is needed to be a modern dancer? Elizabeth. Oh, wow. Um, that's a good question. Um, a lot of training, as you probably already have guessed. And also, I think you need to be very um, in touch with what's happening right now in the world. Because modern dance really reflects very much the society that we live in. And the kind of feeling and the kind of um, social issues that people are dealing with today. So I think you probably just have to live your life very openly and honestly, and then that's probably the best preparation. So we have an email question. How long did Martha Graham dance? Martin? As far as I know, she performed until she was in her mid to late 70s. So that would be? 70 years and she began her company when she was in her late 20s so she danced between the time she was say 25 and 75. And we have another email no an audience question yes at what age should someone begin training to be a modern dancer um, that's a Erica. really <laughs> that's a really good question um, we have people in the company who started um, what dancers would say is late, maybe 17, 18, 20 years old. Other people start when they're five years old. So if you have the desire to do it, you, you can do it at different points in life, but you have to work very hard no matter what time you start. <laughs> and another email question. How has the Graham Technique influenced other dance companies? Ah, there's a question, Catherine. Well, many other dance companies have been influenced by the technique. A lot of companies were started by former Graham dancers, such as Paul Taylor um, and Merce Cunningham, both dance with Martha. Um, other companies, like uh, the Alvin Ailey Dance Company, uses Graham um, classes and Graham teachers in their school, and it's part of the preparation for their work. So. 
Excellent. And we have one more question from the audience. Could you please introduce the dancers? <laughs> oh, oh, this is a test for me. <laughs> very, very quickly, dancers, one at a time. Your name and where you're from. Jalan. Jalan Lambert, Jr. from Miami, Florida. Jalan Lambert, Jr. from Miami, Florida. Carrie Elmore Tollich from Virginia. Maurizio. <laughs> Maurizio Nardi from Italy. Christophe Janot from France. Yuko Suzuki from Japan. Tadej Burdning, Slovenia. Jennifer De Paolo Rivera from Saratoga Springs, New York. David Zarak, Canada. Catherine Lutton from California. Erica Denkmeyer from California. Martin Lofsness, Norway. Elizabeth Alclair, Massachusetts. Whitney Hunter, Chicago. Jennifer Conley from Baltimore, Maryland. <laughs> Heidi Steckley from Oklahoma. Hi, I'm Blakely White McGuire from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I'm Virginie Messen from France. I'm Alessandra Prosperi from Italy. We've, we've run out of time. If you didn't have didn't have a chance to ask any question today, you may contact the artist by using the email address on the screen. We'd love to hear from you and answer your questions. We invite you to visit the Kennedy Center website for additional resources on this program. On the Performing Arts Series homepage, you'll find study guide information for use in the classroom and information on future programs. You can also view webcasts of this and other programs. We hope you'll evaluate the program content via an online evaluation form. On the Kennedy Center's Arts and Education website, Arts Edge, a new interactive mini-site shows the process by which a new member of the Martha Graham Dance Company would learn to perform the Martha Graham repertory. The next Kennedy Center program, Jazz, The Legacy of Dizzy Gillespie with the Billy Taylor Trio and trumpeter John Faddis, would broadcast on Tuesday, March the 1st from 11 to 12 noon Eastern Time.